Now, these environments that I'm talking of are the environments from which the large animals came. Millions and billions of them in numbers we cannot even begin to imagine today. You have 10 large mammal species, I'm told, in North America. There used to be 40 more species of large mammals in America before humans got here. All right, so these are the environments from which these animals came. And they only had one defense from their predators, which were pack hunting predators in the grasslands of the world, the seasonal environments. And they were ferocious uh, predators. And the only defense these animals had from them was to bunch and crowd. And when they bunched and crowded, they dunged and urinated all over their own food. So they had to keep moving. Not necessarily migration, but just constant movement of dung and urine and fouled ground. Because no species will feed on the, or likes to feed on ground they have fouled. Then we are left with only one option. That is our livestock. Now, when I first realized this way back in about the mid-60s, by then I'd, I'd realized, okay, we cannot save land with wildlife. I'd started the game ranching industry, which is now a multi-billion dollar industry, and I had initiated that, coined the words game ranching, believing if we could get rid of the livestock, we could do things right. And then I found I was wrong. We had to have the livestock. And when I realized that, the question was how to do it. So we'll come to that in a moment. But let's look at first, will using the livestock work? Now, there we had that grassland we were looking at. Now, what we've done here is a simulation of the wild herds of the past. And we've crowded cattle. There's some sheep and goats, but you can't see them. Onto that um, very high uh, level for a short period. And you can see the change. Now, that massive material has been broken down dung, urine, and litter on the surface. So it's all broken down. Now light can reach the growth points of the grass when it starts to grow again. The soil is completely covered, so any rain is fully effective. Now when that started to flush, you can see it, it's free to flush, and there's the same site now, a year later. All right, so we know now that, okay, if we can use animals, we can do it. It's a biological problem, and they can do what is needed. So I've just got to find a better way. And that led to um, looking at all professions to see who has dealt with anything nearly as complicated as this. No biologists had, no ecologists had, no range scientists had, anything of that sort. And fairly logically, I looked at businesses, and it was too academic, uh, and so on. They'd never dealt with anything quite as quick changing and chaotic. And then logically I looked at the military and how had the military over 300 years in Europe worked out how to train people quickly to deal with immediate battlefield conditions and always come up with the best possible plan. The ranchers have got a plan a year, two years, whatever. They've got a plan for big areas, different dimensions. How could you do that? Oh, easy, put it on a chart. We just put it on a chart. And it's pathetically simple. And I've had school leavers learn to do this in an hour and a half and do a beautiful job. We did that, and it worked immediately. We began reversing desertification. We began increasing livestock, routinely doubling the number of animals on the land and getting immediate recovery beginning in the first year. And then after about four years, we began to get some erratic results. Back to the drawing board, why are the results erratic? And looking at it, was it the planning process? No, it wasn't that. Where was it? And it was coming from social and cultural issues and economic issues that we hadn't brought into the whole complexity. And that's when the word holistic came in there. 